Um, our defense, obviously. Um, free throws. I think they shot what 30, 38, 38 to ten. So that was probably it. What did you make of that difference? It's huge. I mean, I'm trying to keep my money, but. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we, we should have got to align a lot more uh, defensively, um, let them shoot way too many threes in the fourth. So I think that was the game there. What is the frustration level after uh, that fourth quarter and a game that uh, you played so well for you? Yeah, it's pretty pretty frustrating. It's pretty high. But at the same time, we and we got to focus on Portland now. So move on from this game, get ready for the next one. Yeah, Jacques was talking about poise, discipline. How is that something that you can build as a team? You gotta, you gotta learn that. Um, and we gotta be willing to take that next step. You know, it's, it's easy for us to lock in for that first half and three quarters, or whatever it is. Um, but we gotta learn how to do that the whole game, from you know the first to the last guy. Ben, you've been on a lot of really good teams in the past. How long does it usually take the group that doesn't know how to play with one another to figure out? The um, it takes time. Like we're not going to figure out in, in this first part, but I think for us, it's each game we got to learn and we got to be willing to be disciplined and, and sacrifice. Um, you know, it's, it, it takes four quarters to win a game, and, and we got to be locked in from the start to the finish. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, but we got to learn that's not. There's no team where we can just settle. You know, we got to come in with that mentality every night. We want to win um, and play all four quarters. Have you guys pointed where, where the communication breakdowns are happening when you do have quarters? Uh, it happens, you know, throughout the whole game. You know, there's moments where we, you know, have mis miscommunication, but it's something we got to be, you know, focused on throughout the whole game. Why do you think it's been? I think with with everything, it takes time. You know, I don't think it just happens overnight where you're a good team defensively. Um, and you got to learn these these games. These are good teams we're playing. They're not, you know, teams you're supposed to blow out. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's something, you know, Indiana Pacers stay with it. You know, we had a game like that against Portland where we stay with it. Um, and that's that's how it's going to be all year. You know, you got to stay with it all four quarters to win. With this one, at what point and where did you see this momentum shift? It definitely was a momentum shift. Um, not sure exactly when that happened. Um, but for me, the overall poise the in, for the whole group, I think that was the most important thing that we lacked a little bit. So whether that was they started a run and we didn't respond the correct way, uh, they were becoming more of the aggressors and kind of shifted everything towards their favor. Um, and, and you got to have poise when you're trying to win on the road. The free throws. Yeah. Um, I know that that's not a number you want to see. Was there anything defensively that, w that was giving you guys trouble? Yeah, so overall, we wanted to try to get them off the three line today. And uh, early in the game, we did so. Uh, I'm not sure how disciplined we were when, once they got to the rim of not fouling. So that's the, the next piece of that is uh, couple that with them not shooting a three, getting them off the line, but having the discipline when they get to the rim, just be vertical. A lot of times, guys are going to miss those shots, and, and uh, we, we rewarded them with fouls. Yeah, you have uh, the stretch of... Uh, them making shots. Uh, we had some breakdowns defensively for sure. A um, little lack of communication defensively. Uh, just the whole second half, 71 points is just way too many. Um, the fouling piece, uh, it was a little bit of a little potpourri, a little bit of everything. And uh, when you're on the road, just just can't happen. You mentioned very cool, but you have better players, you have superstars. Why do you feel sometimes the discipline is lacking in situations like that? Yeah, it was interesting. We really shortened the rotation tonight to try to look at that. We're still trying to figure this thing out as we, you know, don't have all of our pieces. And uh, so we shortened the rotation, see what that was like. Uh, liked it in good stretches. Um, I think the group is just learning each other. And so uh, what happens? How do you respond when you don't ha have the communication that you need? Uh, is are the next three possessions more communicative you know uh, so i think we're figuring that out uh, on both ends of the floor uh, so i think that work in progress it's a good challenge for this group what did you make of the free throw disparity 
Yeah, you got another foul. Uh, and so for us, we just got to be disciplined enough. You're on the road. Uh, you can't expect any calls. Uh, so for us, it's a good lesson to uh, to be more disciplined and uh, how we approach the defensive end of the floor. Do you think that the frustration was building throughout the game, or is that just – Fourth quarter, things got out of hand. It looked like it was a little chippy throughout the course of the game at different segments, and so uh, and, and that's the poise piece that I'm referring to. Uh, you, you just you can't let it affect the outcome of the game and out, and the rhythm of your team. So uh, that part, a little disappointing in, in the poise piece. Jeff, we've heard uh, a lot from the players that hey, it's early, we're still learning each other. You said it there. In your experience, how long does it take yeah. for a group to gel? Yeah, this home stretch is, is, is interesting for us in, in order for us to take care of business. And you get in that, you know, that space, hopefully, where, you know, hopefully you're getting guys to return and you can solidify rotations. Not making excuses, that's not the world I live in. Uh, but really trying to, players love to be in a, a space where they have comfort. And uh, if we can get to a space where we can have a lineup that we know is set from game to game, those things matter. That's what we're searching for. Uh, we've got some of it by getting Ben, playing more minutes now. That piece looks like it's pretty soft. Uh, getting Seth back to backs, his minutes are going up. Uh, getting TJ, Utah back in the mix. So there's still some work to be done to get to know each other, but uh, we, we do need to start streamlining this thing and getting going the right direction. This home stretch you guys have even, even more of an opportunity to get practice in, or how that would be beneficial. Yeah, you get a little bit of a rhythm. You know, the, besides the uh, the first back to back, there'll be you know a day in between. Get a chance to watch some film. Get a chance to walk through some things. So all that that matters. Uh, we haven't had a chance to do that on the road just because we've been on the road and trying to recover. So uh, hopefully we can take advantage of that. Yeah. Did you talk to Claxton about that being on Calvert Point? I did not. Uh, it was more so when I addressed the team, I did use the word poise and uh, talked about, you know, how you have to be on the road and it can affect the, the, your teammates and, and, and the outcome of the game. How difficult is that for someone as young as he is who's still kind of wearing a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I mean you take some of these lessons because you don't want this to happen in a playoff game or uh, uh, down the line. So hopefully he learns from it now so that, you know, a mistake is a lesson not learned. So hopefully it is, he, did, he will learn his lesson. About Benedict Mafford, you said during pregame mm. that he had a good evaluation. You guys were able to limit him there in the first half, and then he went off and scored ten straight points for them. What did you see from him? Was it just a matter of shots eventually going to fall? Impressive young man. That's the first piece of it, uh, and he keeps playing. Uh, he has a great, I don't know, way about him. Uh, extremely strong. You know, we lost him on a three, which was in transition, which we didn't get matched up. And so those are the, you know, defensive possessions that we can't have. And he made that. And then the next thing you know, you're closing out to him. He can get to the rim. Um, but it'd be interesting to see if you don't allow him to have that empty open three, does that affect the rest of his game? So uh, it, it was definitely.